Hi everybody, I'm Jalicia Ate Northcliffe and I'm teaching a class on wire wrapped rings. I wish we could all be together, I wish I could see your faces and we could laugh and learn together, but unfortunately that's not possible right now, so we have to do it virtually. I want to start by giving a big thank you to the people at Pinsick University for making this opportunity possible that we can still learn from each other even though we're not at Pinsick this year. Making wire wrapped rings are one of my favorite crafts to do. They're inexpensive, they're simple to make once you learn how, and they're wonderful to give for largesse or gifts. A while ago, I was my Baroness Chatelaine and I made a bunch of rings. And when a newcomer came to our group, I would give them a ring. And oh boy, they would be so thrilled that they were actually getting something from me. So it, it just makes people's eyes light up. It's just a wonderful thing to see. And the other great thing about rings is that you can make them in different sizes and then let people choose. So a man can choose something that fits on his little finger or a woman can choose a bigger one that fits on her thumb or, or her middle finger. So everybody's happy. All right. I do want to tell you, though, that as far as I know, these are not period. I have not been able to document these. So I would definitely put them in the category of Malevaoid, okay? So unless you can do a lot of research and find out uh, that they are period, please don't try to enter these into an ANS competition or anything like that, okay? Uh, they're just for pretty, that kind of thing, all right? I also want to give uh, a shout out to Mistress Elizabeth Ailes, who's from my barony, the barony of the Cleflands, and she taught me how to make the rings, and she is definitely the expert so if you ever get a chance to take a class from her, please do. I do have a handout that I will be referring to from time to time so I remember everything I want to say in this class. And at the end of this video, I will give you information about how to get one of these yourself. Uh, one of the first things that you're going to need is called a ring mandrel. Okay, you can get all these supplies online or at Joann's, uh, one of those craft stores, easily available. All right, um, I don't know if you can see, but this is the kind of mandrel that has a groove down the center. I would definitely recommend getting this kind. You'll see why later because the bead that we're going to use can fit in here. There are other kinds of mandrels like this that are smooth, they do not have the groove down the center. You can use these too, but they're a little trickier to use. All right. You're also going to need craft wire. All right. This wire is gauge 22, gauge 22. Um, you can use something that's uh, a little bendier or a little thicker. Uh, thicker, stiffer wire makes rings that are more professional looking, but because the wire is, is stiffer, it's harder to work with. So I would recommend that to get started, you stick with 22 gauge, all right? Because it's easily manipulated with your fingers and it's easy for starting off with. You're going to need beads. These are 12 millimeter beads. They come in lots of different colors, as you can see. Um, I used to be able to get these very cheaply at Michael's and now they're not really carrying them anymore. So uh, you just have to, to, you know, look around. You get them in strings like this, all right? I think this string cost me maybe two bucks. And of course, uh, each bead will make a ring. So again, you can see that this is pretty economical. They also come in different colors, which is always a lot of fun. Then you're also going to need to make to have uh, jewelry making supplies, which you may already have if you're into making jewelry or other crafts. These are round nose pliers called that because they are round. And this is the one that you're going to be using most of the time. We also have flat nose pliers. Okay. And um, you might have some that are uh, not tapered at the end, they're more squared off at the end. Try to get ones that are tapered because they can really get into those small little areas that you need to work with. But if you have the other kind, this is, a, is, a, is an example of the other kind that's more square on top, uh, that's fine too. All right. And then of course you need wire cutters. Okay, this is what we're going to need to cut the wire. You can cut wire with scissors. Uh, don't use your good scissors, it'll ruin them. 
uh, invest in some side cutters, okay? Um, sometimes these are a little pricey, um, just depends on what you want to, how much you want to spend if you want to go with the really expensive ones, all right? So now, are we ready to get started? The first thing I'm going to do is cut a length of wire. And my notes tell me that the wire is supposed to be about 27 inches long. But of course, I just kind of eyeball it now. And like a lot of other crafts, you're going to be cutting something that's longer than what you really need. That's always the way, right? But it's always better to have more than to not have enough. Okay, there's my wire. Now I'm going to use my fingers and my hands and I'm going to kind of straighten it out, straighten out the loops until it's mostly straight, okay? Then I'm going to bend it in half. Now we're going on to step two. We're going to select our bead, okay? And I'm going to put the bead, can I see it? Yes, uh, on the wire, okay? So the bead is on the wire, traveling down to where we made the little divot in it okay and now what you're going to do is you're going to make a divot on one side of the bead and then a divot on the other side of the bead okay so it looks like that and usually in my classes I joke that it looks like Sputnik okay you're showing your age if you know if you get that joke all right so now uh, the bead is in the middle right there okay now we're going on to step three Get your ring mandrel and decide what size ring that you want. Be aware that the ring that you end up with is going to be smaller than the number on the mandrel. What I mean by this is that if you start off at size 10, your, the ring that you end up with is going to be probably more like a 9 or an 8. And that's because with the wrapping, the wire wrapping is going to take up some space in there. So just be aware it's not an exact science. I'm going to uh, put this at a nine, okay? So hopefully that'll be a pretty good size ring. Okay, now this is the part where things get a little tricky. I just wanna say, like anything else, it will get easier with practice, okay? So now I'm holding it so that the, the, the bead is in the groove of the mandrel and the two sides of my Sputnik are on either sides of the mandrel, okay? Now I'm gonna hold it with my left hand so that my thumb and my first finger are holding the wire on either side of the mandrel, okay? I hope you can see that. I'm trying to move it around so you can see it, all right? Now I'm gonna take one of the sides of the wire. I'm gonna to start to wrap it around, okay? like that, okay? So now I've got it like that. I wrapped it twice around. Now I'm gonna hold all this, and actually the key to these rings is trying to keep the wire as tight as possible on the mandrel. Now I'm gonna do the same thing over here, okay, the second wire, so that now I have this, okay? The wire in the middle, the bead in the middle, one wire on the left side, one wire on the right side, okay? Now, I'm going to take this wire, I'm gonna make a little divot in it, like that, okay? I'm going to take this wire, bend it, I'm putting the end of the wire into the groove, and it's going underneath the wire and the bead, I'm going to pull it, and this is getting all the wire together, so it'll be kind of a nice package for you when you start to wrap it, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to make the divot. Try and make the divot as close to the mandrel as you can. Take the wire, the end of the wire, loop it underneath here, okay? See that? looping it here, shoving it under, 
Sometimes you have to remind it who is boss. Okay. All right. So now I have this. Okay. That's what I have. Now we get to the pretty part. I'm going to take one end and join it to the other end. All right. So the two ends are together. And now I'm going to start to wrap them around the bead okay i got i think i wrapped about three times try to keep it close to the bead and then give one of the arms an extra wrap so that you have something like this okay now i'm going to take it off of the mandrel i'm going to hold it like this and now I'm going to take this and I'm going to start wrapping it around and this is where I'm going to grab my flat nose pliers. No, well yeah, my flat nose pliers. Actually, you know what, I think it's better with the round nose pliers. Sorry folks. Okay, round nose pliers. And what you're going to do is bend this down here, bend this around, put it through the middle, through the middle of the ring, bring it back up. And basically you're just making several loops. This is what's going to keep all the, all the wire together. Okay. Try to make these loops as even as you can. Okay. I'm going to make about three loops. All right. And then I'm going to squeeze them together so they're all nice. And Then when I'm on the last loop, make sure you have the, the end coming up like that. I'm going to take my clippers. I'm going to cut it flush. Make sure that the, the cut end is up, is pointing up though, because you don't want the cut end going next to your finger because that would be really uncomfortable. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Yes, you've got it. one, it ended up with one of the loops going over the bead. Uh, if you don't like that, take one of your pliers and just reposition that. You can bring it down. There we go. So I made it kind of its own little loop there. All right. You might want to give it some scrunches on either side, kind of lock things into place. And then you want to take it again and run it on the mandrel to just make it all nice and round. And now we have our ring. Okay.